Hi everyone, it's lovely to see you again this week. How many of you have visited Facebook pages over the past few weeks or so and seen a video in that big header space instead of a static image? Actually, let me know in the comments box below how many of you have seen videos. Personally, I've only seen one. It's such a shame because a video is so much more engaging than a static image. That large cover photo space on your Facebook page acts a bit like a shop window that should hook attention immediately and entice people to have a further look at your page. Get it wrong and your visitors will just click away. And those are easy leads that you've just lost. So in this week's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a video using just Canva and then upload it to your Facebook page cover space. And so that you can generate more leads from your Facebook page, I'm going to show you how to add a call to action to your video. So if you're ready, let's make a start. To begin with, we need to get the correct template dimensions. Facebook always seems to be chopping and changing those dimensions. But at the time of recording this video, which is September 2020, Facebook recommends that you use a template which is at least 820 pixels in width and 312 pixels in height. I've been testing various dimensions and I'm going to recommend that you use a template which is 1700 pixels by 624 pixels because it seems to fit perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the top right hand corner of my homepage, click on create a design and then use custom dimensions. I'm going to tap in 1700 pixels in width and 624 pixels in height and then create a new design. The next step is to upload a combination of high resolution brand photos, graphics or even little video snippets via the uploads tab in the sidebar. If you do want to use video snippets, it really doesn't want to be any more than 30 seconds in duration. You upload videos in exactly the same way as you would do an image using this button. Rather than start from scratch, I'm just going to show you what I used to create my own Facebook page video. I started off with some high resolution photographs from a recent brand photo shoot. For the first slide, I added my business name, my own name, my business logo and my Canva certified creative logo. You can use a little text overlay to help convey to your page visitors exactly who you are, what you do and how you can help them. Try and keep the text to a minimum, however, don't overdo it. And for a little bit of added interest and variety, I used a little video snippet that I created using my scroll animation. If you missed out on this tutorial, I'll leave a link in the resources section below. I don't want to use all of this video, so what I need to do is trim it a little bit. So I'm going to click on it once to select the video, go up to my toolbar where I see a pair of scissors and the number next to them tells me how long my video snippet is in seconds. Now I just want to use about five seconds of the video snippet. So I'm just going to click on the icon and I can see all the frames of my video brought up along this bar here. To trim my video, all I need to do is drag one of these end bars and this is the five second clip that I've selected. So once I'm happy with that, all I need to do is click on done and I have my trimmed video in place. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit more to show you what else I added on my template and I ended with a very important call to action. You can use whatever you want. Bear in mind there are no clickable links so this is not clickable. I've just added the URL for people to type into their web browsers. But I have included some text below and an arrow to draw people's attention to the only clickable button on my Facebook page. Right, so I've added all my content. I've got nine pages in total. Let me just scroll back up to the top just to make sure that I've got everything that I want. 
Now I'm going to make sure that all the essential elements on my template like text can be viewed across all devices. And for that, I'm going to use my own template. As with a lot of social media header images, what you see on a laptop or a desktop device is different to what you see on an iPad, which is again different to what you see on a smartphone, which is why I created my own template with guidelines marked out on it for all devices. I'll give you a link so you can download this exact same template later on in this tutorial. So I've uploaded it already. I'm going to click on uploads and images. And here is my template. So to bring this template up onto my page, I'm just going to click on it once. And once I've got my template over the top of my page, I'm just going to drag the corner buttons to increase it in size so that it's lying exactly over the top of my page. Now what I need to do is click on the transparency button here and drag this button right along the slider until my template is practically transparent. Adjust the transparency enough so that you can see the content below your template. So the blue outline indicates what is visible on your desktop or laptop. The important bit is this orange outline here, and that is the bit that's visible on desktop, iPhone, and your tablet device. And I can see from this orange frame here that my text is lying outside of this orange frame. So that's not going to be visible on my iPad or a smartphone. So what I need to do is just adjust it slightly and bring the text in within the orange frame like this. I'm just going to move the template out of the way slightly so I can get to all my elements. Move that back into place. And yes, all my text is now within this orange frame. And I'm going to repeat this process on every single page of my template. Once that's all done, all you need to do is select the template and delete it. And now comes the fun part. I'm going to add a few professional touches. I'm going to add some animations to each page so that when the file is downloaded as a video, each page will transition beautifully from one to the next and really wow my audience. So let's go to the top of the toolbar, Canva toolbar, and you'll see a little button that says animate. Click on that. And you'll see there are five animations for Canva free account holders and a further five for Canva Pro account holders. To add an animation to a page, you just simply click on the button. Now I want this pan animation to apply to all the pages in my template. So all I need to do is put a tick in this little tiny box that says apply to all pages. So those are my animations done. Now for the slightly tricky part, and it's only tricky when you do this the first time. Once you've done it once, you've done it a hundred times. Let me draw your attention to this little stopwatch icon with another number next to it in seconds. Now what this means is that when I come to download my entire file, as a video, this particular page is going to appear for five seconds. Now bear with me, it seems complicated, but really it isn't. So let me go through this from the top. I'm going to select the first page of my template. I'm going to click on this little stopwatch. And at the minute, this page will appear for three seconds. And for the purpose of this project, that's about right. I'm going to scroll down to my next page and I can see that the stopwatch is indicating to me that this page is going to appear for five seconds. So what I'm going to do is place my cursor in this box here and simply type three and return. And you can see it's changed to three seconds. I'm going to repeat this process on all my pages. Now the page that contains a video snippet 
will appear for as long as the video lasts. So if you remember, I clipped my video to five seconds and that is how long this page will appear for. And my final page that contains the call to action, I think I'll adjust that to seven seconds. Now let me direct your attention to the top right hand corner of your toolbar. You'll see this little white triangle and another figure here in seconds. Now this is indicating to me that when I download all my pages together as a video file, the video will last for 41 seconds. Now the reason why the timing is so important is because any video which is uploaded to your Facebook page cover space needs to be between 20 and 90 seconds in duration. So you can see I'm well within that guideline with 41 seconds. If I click on the little white triangle, it will give me a preview of what that video will look like. So I'm just gonna do that. So now all I need to do is click on the download button and download all my pages as an MP4 video file. Right, I'm on my Facebook page now and it used to be that I could simply click on this edit button, scroll down and upload a photo or a video. That has now changed, no surprises. And what I have to do to upload a video to this space is to choose from my videos. And to do that, you need to upload your video as a post first. And I've already done that. So all I need to do to upload the video here is to click on edit and choose from videos. And of course, I'm going to select this one. In the top left corner, you'll see the option to replay the video in a loop. And of course, you'll want to do that. So make sure that is switched on. Now click on next. You won't be able to read this, but down here it says choose a thumbnail image for your video. So you can choose one of the images you've uploaded from your video to act like a thumbnail image. So you can scroll through using these side arrows here to select whichever one you want. And obviously I want to select this one. I don't need to do anything else. So all I need to do now is save changes. And there is my beautiful video taking pride of place at the top of my Facebook page. And just very quickly to end with, you'll see how my call to action, click the button below with the arrow points right down to this clickable button here. So that's it for this week's tutorial. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn the notifications on so you'll know when I next upload a tutorial and I will see you next time.